For this week's short take, we bring you here at Idilic Mount Makiling at the Philippine High School for the Arts. Uh, the state-run boarding school houses the country's top budding artists. They get to live here for six years, for free. Like free education, free food, free lodging, name it. But while they get to have a taste of the dog-eat-dog -dog world of culture and the arts for free, some students claim that actually came with a price. PHSA has been on the receiving end of a host of harassment claims online. Vice News published a report detailing how past students described a culture of abuse in the institution that has gone unchecked for decades. The school decries this as a sweeping generalization. While imperfect, the art school claims it has mechanisms in place to deal with reports of abuses. Now that system is bound to go under the microscope. Hundreds of young students are set to make their way back here in Los Baños, Laguna. Face-to-face -face classes will resume in a few months' time. But some students fear their school, or in this case, their literal second home, is not a safe space after all. Secluded in the middle of lush greenery, there's no shortage of inspiration here at the Philippine High School for the Arts. A fitting sanctuary for students who want to follow the footsteps of top artists who, like them, had honed their craft within its halls since the 70s. But since the pandemic struck, the dancing and singing have stopped. Rehearsals put a halt and pens and papers tucked away for the meantime. Like other schools, PHSA had to migrate online. But after two years, students will make their way back here in a few months. Sophie, incoming grade 12 and editor-in-chief of school publication Variation says she no longer feels safe coming back to campus. And it's not because of COVID-19. Since first year, there have also been stories about abuse that were mental and um, physical coming from, you know, coming from teachers, coming from higher years, especially when it comes to the performing arts majors. Sophie is not alone. In an informal survey among 48 of its more or less 200 students, 50% said there had been instances when they felt unsafe in campus. Another 48% said they know of someone who had experienced abuse in school. As early as January, students have launched a signature campaign. They demand that school officials investigate allegations of harassment and ensure safe spaces before they return after the lockdown. 129 students, more than 200 alumni, 50 parents, and 36 organizations have attached their names to the campaign. It also isn't the first time that students have tried to say something about this. Ayun po, nagkataon lang din na, as was mentioned in the article, one of the most known perpetrators on campus passed away last November. And that's what really sparked the movement leading up to, ayun, today, to this July. The instructor's sudden death happened at a time when his alleged victims started to come forward. Jerome Canlas, a 23-year-old director and actor who entered the school in 2011, narrated the abuse he suffered in the hands of the said teacher, also a PHSA alumnus. Jerome said that back then, they would hold rehearsals in his home in Quezon City, miles away from the confines of the boarding school. It was just easier uh, to, to sleep uh, at his house and um, that's when the sexual misconduct happens. He would lay down a mattress. We were we were going to be sleeping beside each other, and he'll hug me. And I was a minor during this time. This went on from his second year in school until well after graduation. Back then, he thought no ill of his teacher's actions. I think because it's the culture of the the school and theater and how that was normalized. Nobody checked him on what he was doing because he was. Uh, kind towards us, he would feed us whenever we were there, you know, offer his space. And um, we, we really idolized him and I looked up to him as, a, as my teacher, really. So that's why I didn't find anything malicious about it. And I, I, I thought it was normal because I thought he was my friend. He was actually, I, I treated him as my older brother, really. In campus, Jerome says abuses can come in different forms, from verbal to emotional. Thinking this was all necessary to his formation as an artist, he did not file any complaint. 
To his recollection, it's not like the school provided an environment where students can come forward anyway. He remembers another student filing a case against the same teacher, but that too, he says, was swept under the rug. We were really scared to file a complaint because we just knew that wala rin mangyayari. As an adult, Jerome, together with the other victims of the said abuser, was forced to come forward and speak with industry leaders, knowing that their abuser remained an influential force in the theater scene. His family was supposed to file a complaint last year. That's until the abuser died. There are cases, though, that some students were able to report such incidents to school authorities. Take the case of Cha Garcia, now a 28-year-old design consultant. She entered in 2007 as a visual arts major. Back then, a house parent was notorious for physically touching girls, even playing with their bra straps. Yung isa na lang na madalas ko makita, kadiri talaga, na nagkakalikot siya ng tagliran ng babae, malapit sa boobs, tas kadiri talaga. Hanggang ngayon, kadiri pala pa rin talaga. At first, Cha admitted that it was not an issue for her since she has no close contact with the alleged perpetrator. But that changed come her third year in school. Nagkaroon ako ng experience na mag-isa ako sa waiting area. May shed kasi doon, waiting area, tapos may TV. Na nanonood ako, gabi na kasi noon, past seven na ata. Nanonood ako ng anime sa TV, tapos hindi ko alam, hindi ko napansin na katabi ko pala siya. Tapos bigla na lang nangiliti sa tagiliran ko. Hindi ko siya nagustuhan, pero since hindi naman siya tinitingnan bilang issue noong time na yun, um, hindi ko lang siya pinansin, pero hindi ako nag-react, napatingin lang ako sa kanya. Pero hindi, hindi, hindi talaga kami close eh. Ayoko, ayoko talaga yun. Uh, nireport ko siya. Since na-experience ko na na Ganun. Baka maulit uli sa akin. The school's immediate action asked the involved personnel to apologize to Cha. But even then, he was retained as a house parent, still giving him easy access to dormitories. While Cha personally no longer had any encounters with the staff, this still baffled her. Sa naobserbahan ko, kapag estudyante, nagkaroon ka ng issue patungkol sa sexual na issue na tutugunan agad at na-actionan agad, na alis agad sa paaralan. Pero bakit itong isang admin na ito na may history na pala, na hindi lang pala ako, na madami pala. Imposible namang hindi nila alam yun na, na maraming report. Bakit pag siya parang na-promote pa? A well-placed source tells One News that from being a house parent, the alleged staff has been promoted to an administrative post in 2018. Current students say, while well, this should mean less contact with them, they still couldn't say for sure. His new position is um, far from the campus, so he won't be seeing the students as often. But I'm still not sure for how true that is. There is a student that he would give a weird amount of attention to um, or interact with in ways that students were uncomfortable with. We got hold of signed documents from at least five alumni, all alleging sexual misconduct against this said personnel. However, the school in response said a sworn complaint is needed among a host of other requirements to get the ball rolling on the investigation. We tried to reach out to the said school officer, but he has yet to respond. In a statement sent to One News, PHSA insists that it has internal mechanisms to address such complaints of harassment and abuse. That includes the formal submission of notarized complaints and certificates of non-forum shopping. But the Safe Spaces Act of 2019, or the Bawal Bastos Law, should have made it easier for cases of harassment to be heard, especially in educational institutions, even without the filing of formal complaints. Dapat may extra concern kapag uh, reports may reach their ears or their knowledge that in fact opposite acts are taking place that will undermine uh, these rights of the students. Law author Senator Risa Ontiveros is not discounting the possibility of an investigation of these allegations of harassment in PHSA. If further 
fact-finding bears it out, then a resolution and the inquiry that could follow could be a possible next step or course of action under uh, the safe spaces or bawal bastos law. But uh, we're still studying it now in my legis group uh, based on uh, the facts as they are emerging. Seeking accountability is just the beginning of the fight for students and alumni alike. For them, the real battle is ensuring that the institution becomes a safer space moving forward. It's just the culture that breeds these kinds of um, abuses and how it's normalized in not just in our school, but actually in every industry. But especially in our school because, it, well, it's a education space and uh, minors are victimized by this kind of culture. So not just my teacher, but also um, other adults who are working at PHSA have been out for their um, misbehavior towards children. So I guess it's not just because of the person, but also because of the culture that breeds it. This problem goes beyond makiling po since it happens in so many institutions. Hindi pa rin po matatanggi na one of the biggest sources this problem in school also kind of resonates throughout the local art scene since cases of abuse and harassment, you know, aren't, aren't new. For Jerome, the work actually begins inside the classroom or in their case, in studios. May mga hindi talaga kaya. Emotion, mentally, the draining siya, all the sleepless nights, the demand to be the creme de la creme of young artists. I've received mga mura, um, shouting, yeah, emotional manipulation, everything. We have to rethink it and the culture of everything, how teachers teach, who are these teachers, we have to question everything. For Cha, a better sex education might actually help students navigate better how they relate with others in the secluded community. Nagreport sila ng isang prof na pinilit silang pumunta sa isang parang virgin love fest. Pinilit silang manood ng nudity na hindi naman na-explain, parang pinilit lang expose Tapos parang brinash off lang siya bilang creative um, expression na hindi nila inisip yung welfare, yung trauma ng mga naka-experience nun. Maunti talaga yung set, sex ed sa amin. Ipipilit mong i-expose sila sa ganun nang walang, walang ka-context-context. Context. Jerome is also proposing a more comprehensive psychosocial support for students, especially since these young artists spend their formative years as adolescents outside the comforts of their home. They should build a good and a solid uh, foundation, psychosocial or guidance counseling system. There should be a watch for these abuses. I don't know how, but um, maybe uh, an external force or somebody who could help an outside party or the alumni could help uh, form a group that would really watch on the, the cases and the the mental and emotional uh, well-being of the students there, uh, given that it is a dorm school, if it continues to be a dorm school. These have to be questioned on the whole operation of the school. Ibarang, that's what the students here at the Philippine High School for the Arts are called. I asked around to find out what it means, thinking that it might actually have its origin from a local language or a dialect. But they say it only caught on as part of oral tradition. It was coined for a production to mean maibalang, ibarang maibalang. Parang simple, no? But that, I guess, more than anything, is what ibarang's past and present want. Change for things to be different. Changes to ensure that the halls where they hone their craft will also be a home where they won't have to fear for their safety. I'm Jess De Los Santos, and this is my short take.